were brought down because their identity was distorted. The same thing the devil tried to do with Jesus. You hear what I'm saying? The same thing he tried to do with Jesus. If you're a son of God, command this stone to become bread. Meaning the only way you'll prove to me that you're a son of God is when or if you do a miracle. Is if you perform a miracle. But when you perform a miracle just to please people, now you're no longer, uh, uh, you're no, you're no longer a, a representer of God. Now you've, you've become a performer. So if you are truly a son of God, do something. Let me see. Let me see. Perform. But God did not, do you want to tell me all the anointing and the favor and the grace and the glory of God upon your life has been put on your life just for you to be a performer? No. You are a world changer. You are a force to be reckoned with. You are a prophet in this world. You use your word to design people's destiny. The devil tried so hard to confuse Jesus' identity. But I'm glad that Jesus knows who he is. I do not have to perform any miracle. Whether I do a miracle or I don't do it, I'm still a son of God. Whether I have money or I don't have money, I'm still a son of God. Whether people love me or they don't love me, it doesn't change anything. I'm still a son of God. Whether I'm sleeping in the house or sleeping out, I'm still a child of God. Whether my business is going well or it's not going well, it doesn't change my identity. I'm still a child of God. Shout hallelujah. What does it mean to be a son of God? The term son of God simply means God in the flesh. God in the flesh. That's why Jesus says that in that day, they will see his face and his name will be on his forehead. Because now I'm a son of God. I'm God in the flesh. My man of God, Pastor Dietrich, when I received Jesus Christ, Guya stopped living. Guya actually died. The person that started living in Guya is Jesus Christ. That's why I'm called a son of God. Do you know why you struggle sometimes in your work with God? Because you lean so much on your human side than you do on your divine side. You have a divine nature in you. You have a divine nature in you. I know we always say, oh, nobody can be perfect. We cannot be perfect. That is the language of the world. In the kingdom, we are perfect. Oh, I know that has confused somebody's theology. In the kingdom, we are perfect. Because when you got born again, the word born again is a Greek word, anothen. Anothen means born from above. When you got born again, when you are receiving Jesus Christ, God the Father was in his maternity ward and he was pushing you out. He was giving birth to you because when you are born again, you are not born again by your biological mama. No, no, no. You don't go back to your biological mama for her to give birth to you again. When you are born again, now it's God giving birth to you. Now, when a donkey gives birth, a donkey will give birth to a donkey. When a dog gives birth, a dog will give birth to a puppy. When a human being gives birth, a human being gives birth to a human being. When God gives birth, God gives birth to a God. And if you do not know these things, you will complain like a world. You will look frustrated like the world. You will look confused like the world, not because you don't carry God in you, but simply because you do not know. That's why God acknowledges his people. He says, my people, they are mine, but they are perishing for lack of knowledge. In the book of Psalms, it says, I said ye are gods, sons of the most high, but you shall die like mere men. Why? Because you do not know. Listen to this. I said ye are God, son of the most high, then he brings it down, but you shall die like mere men. Meaning, when you got born again, you stopped being a mere man. When you got born again, he elevated you. 
Now you are operating on a different frequency. You are operating in a different dimension. You are so dangerous. Somebody say, I am dangerous. Say it again, I am dangerous. Now let me finish with this. The Bible says that you shall see his face and his name will be on your forehead. What does this really mean? The Spirit of God wants you to know. He, number one, he wants you to take away every condemnation. He wants you to take away every guilt. When I said that you are perfect, I wasn't talking to the flesh you. I was talking to the spirit you. The spiritual you is what God gave birth to. John chapter 4 verse 24, the Bible says God is spirit. His nature, his image is spirit. So if God is spirit, when he gives birth to a child, that child has to be spirit. You hearing what I'm saying? So the you that I'm talking about is your spirit. When, we, when you get born again, there are three transformations that happen. Number one, when you get born again, your spirit gets born again immediately. You get saved immediately. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. When you got born again, you get saved immediately. First John 3, 9. First John 3, 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin. Because he has been born of God. That is the Bible. First John 3, 9. Whoever has been born of God cannot sin. God says it's impossible for you to sin when you have been born of God. What is he talking about? What part in your body is he talking about? He's talking about your spirit part. Your spirit cannot sin. That's why every time you do something wrong, you feel weird. You feel some type of way. Amen. You kind of feel guilty and condemned. That is your spirit reminding you that, hey, we no longer do that. That is not our food. We don't do that. He's not condemning you. He's just reminding you, hey, no, we don't vibe like that. We don't ride like that. Are you hearing me? That is you. And that is the one that the Bible says you are perfect because the Bible says, be ye perfect as your father is perfect. Why is he asking us to be perfect? Because he knows there is a nature in us, in our spirit, that is perfect. You can love your enemies. Those people that hate you, you have it in you. You have the power in you. You have the capacity in you to love them and to forgive them. That's why God is calling you. Be perfect as your father is perfect. Your father forgave the people that tortured him on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. He was able to do that because in him there is perfection. In him there is the power to do that. Hallelujah. Let me finish with this. The, last, the second part that you get born again is your soul. Somebody say soul. soul. Say again soul. soul. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved. Not to us who are already saved. To us who are being saved. It is the power of God. So in your spirit, you are already saved. In your soul, you are being saved saved. Romans 12 2, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind and your soul are interchangeable. Your soul is your mind. Your mind is your soul. So you get saved. You are being saved. Right now you are being saved. It's the exact thing that Jesus did when he called out Lazarus from the tomb. He told the disciples unwrap him. Jesus did not unwrap him himself. He told the disciples, unwrap him. For he chose some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers of the world. To unwrap the saints. So when you, what you're doing right now, you are getting unwrapped. You are not going to be on the same level after this. You've been unwrapped from something. Because you are being saved. But now your body, Philippians 3.21, your flesh... Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Not he has transformed. He will. So your spirit is already born again. 